Good morning. If you want to see how we made all these cutting boards out of scrap wood we found around the shop, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning and welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 376. Uh, today is uh, one of those videos where I make the intro after I've already finished the project and that's usually because I don't exactly know which way I'm going to go. Um, so I can't really make the intro because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, but uh, today I think we learned some things and the video is kind of long. I think I'm going to keep it long and see what happens. I know people don't like uh, long videos, but you can always blink it forward because I think we learned some things and it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. But we're not going to have any of that fun unless we knock off the chit chat and get to work. Cleaning up my wood storage, cleaned out these bend here. These are fence pickets I'm letting dry. And these are some two before some uh, treated two before I'm letting dry. Moisture content's a little uh, high in them yet. And I'm cleaning out my inside storage. I went through my trim and called out what I don't think I need. Here's all the uh, good wood I have. Uh, this down here is uh, hard maple. This is red oak. This one's cedar. This is cypress. And this is poplar. And so, while I was cl I'm cleaning up my, my wood area, I said, I got all these little pieces here. Why not uh, save these little eclectic pieces of uh, solid wood, all the non-treated stuff, and maybe make some cutting boards? I was a little late on thinking of this, but what I'm looking for is any hardwood that is inch and a half thick and 16 inches long. This is my uh, trailer load of scrap I'm going to throw away. You know, you can, uh, I think, make a, make a mistake by keeping all this junk. You know, you can pick up any piece here and say, well, I could use that someday. Well, you can't use it if you can't find it. And it just gets piled away. It's just four, five, six years. And it's just in the way. So, and so I think it's uh, penny wise and pound foolish. So we're going to get rid of this. But since I, uh, I came to this idea a little bit late, uh, I'm going to have to, as I throw this into the uh, uh, recycling bin, I'm going to have to uh, go through and pick out boards that meet the 16 inch by 1 inch, 1 and a half inch thickness, and I'll throw those to the side and add those to our eclectic cutting board project. Oh, I'm here at the uh, recycling place. There's all the wood I threw away. This is all the uh, all the wood I was able to uh, call out of that, and I think the reason is because most of the stuff I threw away was treated, and of course I can't make uh, cutting boards out of treated wood. I'm back from the recycling center. I'll uh, go ahead and put away this good wood. And then we'll go through our cutting board wood and see how much we got. I 
I don't think we have. I don't think we have as much as we ordinarily would, because you know, just been a few weeks ago, we made uh, we made some cutting boards. Of course, the reason I'm making these cutting boards, I think, is kind of be kind of interesting to take all this eclectic. Uh, different size wood and all that stuff and putting them together I think we're gonna come up with some interesting patterns well I got all the wood uh, sorted out into Four different uh, patterns here. This one I had uh, some of that poplar I put between this oak, and then I had some of this some um, offcuts from some other cutting boards, and I put that in there with uh, with the poplar strips. So one glue up. This is kind of a plain Jane. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. And this is the plainest Jane. I don't know what I'll do with this either. I think I may, uh, after I glue it up, uh, cut it again and get some kind of a pattern by alternating the strips. And this is the most colorful one. So far it's turning out about the best. This has got the hardwood. It's got the off cuts here. The plywood layups with poplar strips between them that also uh, outline the hardwood in the uh, around the border. Okay, let's uh, do some glue up. Going ahead and gluing these up. What I do is I'll get them glued up. I'll probably let them sit overnight before I further process them. Actually, I tried to uh, lay the boards out and do them all at one time. That didn't work because all the boards are different thickness. Some are an eighth, an eighth of an inch, some are a quarter, some are an inch, an inch and a half. So, and each board has a lot has a lot of uh, pieces. Okay, I got all the glue ups done. There's our fanciest board. It's plain Jane. There's another one there. We might cut, make that a an end grain. Got that one over there done. Now, these are going to be smaller boards than we did a few weeks ago. Let me show you why. When I gave away those other boards, I just laid them on the table. You can see some, there's a big one there. And here's a couple of big ones over here. I put them out on the table and uh, told the folks they'd take what they wanted. And they left the three biggest boards. So, I guess... My guess is that people don't like the big boards. 
so we're going to make uh, these boards a little smaller. Alrighty, we got the uh, boards glued up. I'll see you in the morning, which will be one second. Well, it's the next day. Tell you what, I'll uh, take these clamps off and then I'll show you what happens to glue when you leave it overnight. I should have clamped these things up, waited for an hour and a half or so, and then scraped the glue off. But I didn't do that because I had some other things to do. Um, but it'll be a, a good little learning point. Now I go along to saying uh, don't make a mistake on purpose, but I did it anyway. And that is, when you glue these things up, the best thing to do is to glue them up, wait for about an hour and a half or an hour or two hours or something, uh, and then take the clamps off and scrape the glue off. I let this glue sit overnight, and now it's just harder than crap. So I knew it was a mistake when I did it. I should have so now this glue is very difficult to get off. What I'm gonna do is uh, turn this board up and then see if I can put it through the planer and get the uh, glue off of it. And to put it through the thickness planer, I need one side that's relatively smooth. So I'll take the, the high points off with this uh, uh, orbital sander. Now you'd think I could just take that glue off using my uh, drum sander, but let me show you why that doesn't work. Here you can see on the drum sander, you see this this white stuff here and this right here, this is glue that's got on the sand, sanding belt. If you run, some through has got too much glue on it. The, uh, the belts will just pick up the glue and clog up your, uh, your drums. So, the plan is to uh, get one side as flat as I can and then run the good side uh, across the uh, planer and just take a real light cut and nip that glue off as I go. Now you'd think that wouldn't hurt the blades but it does because what it does is the glue gets caught up um, you know in the blade mechanism and it kills blades, but I don't have the choice since I uh, already screwed this up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is cut this board into inch and a half or maybe an inch and three eighths inch strips and then flip every other strip over end for end so that I can make this board symmetrical. Right now all the color is at this end and just fades to nothing down to, down to bottom. Now what I've done here is put a 
screw in right here to ask, act as a stop when I cut these strips off. Let's see if it works. Okay, I've got it uh, cut up into individual strips here. Now I'm not going to flip them over and and make it an end grain. But what I'm what I'm doing is I have 11 sections here. Now the one section is narrower than the others. So what I'll do, since I have 11 sections, that comes out perfect. I'll put this one in the center. And then I'll flip over in for end every other one and see if that has any interest interest to our design. It may not. Well now it's more than uh, more than the next day. It's actually a couple of days later. I uh, got waylaid by the real world. Um, but I think I made discovery here. This glue now has been drying for about four days. And it's just turned into hard plastic. You know, you could make buckets out of it. And what I've discovered is, I already know that this, this stuff will this glue will clog up my drum sander and it kills my my uh, thickness planer blaze but what I've discovered is it doesn't do any of those things to my random or orbit sander with uh, 40 grit paper now this one went random order a uh, random orbit sander here this is a random orbit sander. I've just taken the uh, dust the dust shroud off, uh, but you can achieve the same thing with an electric drill with one of those little pads on it. But let me show you how good this works. I just took all that uh, Tidemon 3 off this board in about 45 seconds and there's no clog on my uh, sandpaper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up into one inch uh, strips. I'm not even going to run this through the thickness planer because this isn't going to be my gluing surface. I'll be putting some more stock through here. I'll show you on the other piece. This one I did the same way. This is just, I just knocked the glue off with my uh, sander. And then I'm going to glue this thing back together using, this is, 3 8 inch pine I'll cut it to, to width and between each one of these I'll put some of this pine I'm going to do the same thing with the other one we looked at And at this point, uh, things get real dodgy. Um, because there's no way 
this thing is sitting against this back right here, so it's really going to be tippy. So what I've done is is put screws, a screw here and a screw there, a screw there and a screw there, holding this thing in place. Still dodgy, but when I push it through, I'll stand off to the side. So uh, if anything weird happens, I won't be there. I got you set up to see all the action, but hopefully my fingers won't be there when the uh, action starts. Now I've had to st uh, start stop the uh, stop the saw for that reason right there. See how I pull that back and how it cramped it clamped in there. That's because the wood is clamped against the blade, and so you don't want to be pulling that, trying to pull that thing back because it's going to pinch and. So I need to take these screws out. See, I can't even get that one out. So what I got going is I'm going to put some of this 3 8 inch material down between each one of these boards. Now this is 12 inches across. This big board here is 36 inches long, so it's just barely going to fit and probably be a little short. But I'm going to want those boards to be about that wide for this one. Now you can kind of see the scheme. So our next glue up will look like this. Okay, uh, let me uh, get over here and get busy. I'm going to do the same thing on this one for sure. And then I got two more over here. I haven't exactly decided what I'm going to do. That one looks pretty good just the way it is. We'll see. Let me get to it. Well, I got everything glued up. Um, these have been in the clamps about four and a half hours. We're going to try, try to extend our theory a little bit. We're going to take these out of the clamps. And then we're going to use our uh, orbital sander and see if that orbital sander will take off the soft glue and when I say soft glue this this is what I mean see this stuff right here you can just it's it's still real soft 
remember the uh, that real hard glue. We couldn't even cut it with this with this paint scraper. But this stuff is just. Uh, I've put that in, put that in a drum sander. That glue will just uh, destroy that uh, sanding belt. Um, but let's see what happens when you use the orbital sander. Well, I'm running them uh, through the thickness planer now, and I'm getting a real nice effect on this uh, outer edge here when I trim it. This is three-quarter inch piece of wood here, and then these cross pieces come in here, and then I'm going to trim it about uh, three-eighths of an inch right through there, and what that gives me is this nice pattern here. Almost looks like box joints or dovetails. What I want to do is take about half of that three quarter inch piece of wood off. Here you can really see that uh, that pattern in the off cuts. Let me put some sauce on this. Here I put some butcher block wool on it. That gives the end of the cutting board a real nice finished look. I got a bullnose bit in there now. It's kind of a rounded, <clears throat> a rounded um, radius kind of deal. Um, it puts a round slot, and we're going to put little hand holes on two sides of the uh, of our cutting boards. Pretty easy process. Let me show you. And then what you end up with is a slot like this. What we're doing here is um, sanding, sanding the boards. I'm just sanding them to uh, 220. And, and then after that, I'm putting on the uh, butcher block oil, which is mineral oil, food grade. And I, uh, I don't like the, I could sand them all and then put the stuff on, but I don't like that production line stuff, it's not any fun. So I just do one board at a time and make it happen. Then after everything's sanded, 
and put uh, cutting board oil on it. You can buy this stuff out anywhere. You put it on uh, pretty liberally, especially first couple of days, because you need to put maybe two or three coats on after you make the, after you build the thing. You know, I get the question sometime, or it's at least a question that I had, and that is, what do you, what kind of wood do you use for uh, cutting boards? And the answer is, just about anything that's not treated, even plywood, you can see in this. Um, I've got plywood, several different grades of plywood. And I don't recommend, I hope the camera's picking this up. Um, this is this is plywood, cherry, another kind of plywood. Uh, this is I'm I'm not sure it's the same as this right here. I think it's white oak, and then this green right here is uh, poplar, and this is pine. These bars here are all pine. Uh, the one I don't recommend, and I have have it in all these, but only a, just a few strips, and that is red oak. Uh, now I've got the ends blocked off. A white white oak or red oak will soak up water, and that's you don't want to, and it'll expand and and. I've never had any problems with any cutting board, but I know white oak is very susceptible to water. So avoid white uh, red oak. But everything else, as far as I know, uh, I mean, poplar works good. Cherry, cherry here works real good. Um, I think this plywood right here is kind of ugly. This kind of black looking plywood. But you want to put that uh, sauce on there two or three times over the next week or so uh, until they cure out good. And then once every six months after that. Well, here are our cutting board for uh, Memphis Money 376. Uh, you know, in the past we've done herring bones, plywood, teak. Uh, today we went a whole different way. I don't know exactly what this style is, but I think they turned out all right. And that does it for another uh, Memphis Money, M Memphis Money 376, I guess, uh, 12th week of our eighth year. Uh, today we, I think, learned kind of a, it's important to me anyway, and that is, you know, I've been trying to scrape glue off of these things. Uh, whenever I make a cutting board, I, you know, I, I let it dry a little bit till the glue halfway hardens, just gets sort of flaky, and then I can scrape it off and all this and that. Um, but we discovered today that all you need is a just a uh, an orbital sander with a 40 grit uh, paper and you can strip that glue right off there if you're going to run it through the uh, planer anyway if, if you're going to if you if you just if you're just using a, a hand planer or you're just going to sand them flat uh, then that orbital sander a business may not work because it'll put swirl marks. Now, but if you're going to put them through a thickness planer anyway, then it doesn't matter. Um, but it uh, it seemed to work fine. We 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 did it with the real hard glue, and then we did it with the soft glue, and it worked both times. 
uh, I use the same piece of uh, 40 grit paper for all eight boards. And we did a completely new design today. You know, we've done herring bones and checker boards and uh, teak and all kinds of different uh, boards. Um, these are kind of a unique design. Um, I think they turned out fine. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, comment and whatever else you want to do. Uh, but most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.